Hello everyone, so welcome back to another video. Let me just start this off by saying Seed has some amazing songs. Like, no joke, I absolutely love Seed's soundtrack. It got some absolute bangers. Honestly, I've got Believe, the third opening, on constant repeat right now, just because I like it that much. But, Seed I'm still having problems with, and this is what I want to talk to you guys about it. I want to get your input in the comments section down below about all of the stuff I'm about to talk about, because I feel like I might be going crazy here right now, and, you know, I like talking to you guys, I like trying to get your feedback and stuff, and see what you guys think. So, what we're going to talk about is the fact that I sat down and watched 20 episodes of Seed, more or less in a row. I went from episode 12, where normally I can't get past, to uh, episode 32. So, what happened was I thought, you know, I've got this whole deal with Seed. I have problems with the characters and the way that they act, because it's done like a soap opera to attract female audience members, you know, apparently. So I go through episodes 1 to 12, critiquing it previously, and then I took the videos down. I wasn't happy with them because, you know, it sounded like I was bitching all the time. Which, sometimes I do, you know, it, it depends whether I like something or not. And I can be very picky with media. So, I go through episodes 1 to 12, and I'm trying to make sense of, you know, Kira's emotions and everybody else on the ship. They're not that memorable. You know, everybody else is practically forgettable. Before, when I was searching up character names to figure out who to mention accurately to somebody else, I ended up having to search for Sai's name because Sai is, is practically forgettable. Like with most of the cast. The only cast members that I actually remember are Larkus, Arthurin, and Kira, mainly. But anyway... Getting ahead of myself, though. We go through episodes 1 to 12, commenting on how things are and the fact that Kira can't stop crying, you know. And I think, okay, I'll give it another shot. So I sit down and I'll watch from episodes 12 to 32. And I've just got to share my experience with you guys because on one hand, I feel like it was a massive time waste. And on the other hand, I can kind of see where they were going. And then, of course, we've got the whole deal with Kira supposedly dying and then coming back to life, you know. I'll get to that one later on. But on one hand, my feelings when I first started watching all these through, when I got about 10 episodes in, like, so, to, to 22, was that it was a forgettable journey in which there were things just happening... And then we just moved on to something else completely different. Like, for instance, with that, we've had uh, Kargalis group in the desert. And then we just somehow end up in Orb. You know. Or at least that's where we were going. Uh, in the meantime, we have uh, the whole deal with uh, Arthurin's group trying to chase them still. Since uh, Heliopolis. And even though it is one long chase, basically... It felt like... A lot of it felt like it could have been missed. At least that's how I felt. You know, there were, there were a lot of things there where I thought they didn't need to go into a lot of details with. You got the whole deal with uh, Kargli and the Rebels showing their side of things and why they're fighting against Zaft forces that are uh, holding down the desert region. And then, of course, after that, you've got the whole deal with Kargli joining the group and wanting to hitch a ride to Orb. And in the process, uh, Kira and everybody getting chased by Arthurin's group that eventually culminates in Arthurin taking out Kira. And it just felt like a lot of it could have been shortened. You know, it's not that it wasn't necessary, it could have been shortened. Um, but then, of course, after that, you've got the way to the, uh, the other base in Joshua. And... Then you've got the, the resolution of things. You've got after Kira and Tolle's death, um, where you have everybody freaking out, you know, and getting transferred, and you've got uh, Ramius's uh, reports, which essentially end up with her getting completely grilled by her superior officers for doing really stupid stuff, and then they're trying to pass it off as, oh, it's okay, we're just trying to find out who's responsible. You know, it, it was... Uh, so on one side, I'm like, it's a waste. Why did we get, like, 20-odd episodes of this stuff? And on the other hand, now, when I'm just starting episode 33, I'm starting to see where they were going with this, and it's kind of getting interesting. I feel like 
episode 30 for me is at least when the show starts. You know, a lot of people have said, oh, you know, we're just going to drop it. Or I've seen it in the comments section on a couple of other videos where they're like, oh, we had 30 episodes in, but we're, we're just doing this whole thing with bringing Kira back. Now what? You know. But I think now I'm starting to realize the reason why they did it for 20 episodes, the reason why they, they made it drag on so long, primarily was to show the conflict from both sides. You know, you've got everybody else fighting against Zaft. And then you've got Zaft fighting the Earth's forces. And it's to show that generally war is bad. I know this sounds really stupid and obvious. But when you're watching 20 episodes back to back. And you just want the the fun robot fights against each other. And you don't want any of the, the emotional baggage. You know, it, it, kind of, it, it kind of blurs everything. Now that I can sit down and think about it. It's like, okay, I had 20 episodes seeing from different point of views. Which culminated uh, in Miliaria. And Kira's realization that, you know, war is bad and you should not be uh, constantly killing people because you're just going to continue the cycle of hatred. But 20 episodes, man, whoo, you know, they really wanted to punch home that message, you know, really, really dig in deep and just be like, yeah, war is bad. You shouldn't do it, kids. <laughs> you know, um, it was crazy. And I understand, you know, after going all this way now, I, I kind of get where they were going through, going for, but god, 20 episodes, man, it drags on. Anyway, and then, then we've got the, the final piece here, which I, I have some contention with, but apparently it's explained differently, is the way that Kira survives a nuke to the face. For anyone that hasn't seen Seed, or for anybody that needs a reminder, you know, we have the whole deal of um, Nicole being killed in the uh, Blitz by Kira. And then Arthron retaliates and kills Toil. And then the two clash against each other. The Aegis locks onto the strike when the strike's cockpit is exposed by a beam saber uh, slash to it. And then Arthron activates the self-detonation and nukes Kira point blank. Which Kira, even himself later on, says, I couldn't have escaped that way, what the hell? You know, because he wakes up at Larkus's place so, of course, you have conf some confusion as to how the hell Jesus Yamato, as he's called, by certain people or fans, you know, that are just making fun of the plot armor. How the hell did Jesus Yamato get to Lacus's place if he survived a nuke to the face? And how come the character even says, I don't understand this? Well, apparently, the manga is canon. Apparently, Lo from the Junk Guild, from the, uh, the Astray Red Frames pilot, saves him. Apparently, a blast shield comes down and saves Kira from getting nuked in the face. The thing is, I, I kind of don't sit well with it because of it not being explained in the show. And also because, clearly, in the show, Kira's cockpit is melted on the insides. So, I don't, I don't quite get what they're going for there. Maybe the show did it differently. Maybe they weren't told about the manga doing that. Or maybe they just wanted the the drama of having the cockpit been melted just to give off the effect of, oh god, he's dead. You know, only to then surprise you like an episode later or whatever, or a couple of episodes later. But what's interesting for me anyway is the fact that I then found a post online which is supposedly true saying that Seed was a multimedia project, so they had the manga coming out at the same time as the show. So, of course, what you were meant to do is you were meant to read the manga and then watch the show. So, of course, manga readers in Japan will have read the manga first, seen the blast shield, then seen the show and put two and two together and gone, okay, that's how he survived. Whereas Western fans, we don't get that. We don't get the manga unless you really search for it. So, instead, we just got, hey, characters died, bow, out of existence. And then all of a sudden, surprise, Kira's alive again, you know. And it was, it was really jarring, and it's it's kind of weird. Either way, I can go with the Blast Shield thing. It's just, I wish it was done in the show. I really wish it was done in the show. It's like leaving out a massive key point. And I'm sure other people have gone over this plenty of times before. I'm just getting it out there myself, because it, it feels really weird. But, to, to get to the end of this now... I'm excited for where Seed's going. I want to see these last, like, 20 or so episodes, I think it is, and see where it goes and how it finishes, because then I have to go on to see Destiny. It's it's a thing that I'm doing where I'm changing the way that I do things. I'm trying to give things a little bit of a chance here. 
So I guess we'll see what happens with Seed Destiny when we cross that bridge. But until then, yeah, Seed's still a bit weird for me. It's not as bad as, as people say it is. There are some things I can forgive, like the Blast Shield thing, if it is true that it was a multimedia project and was planned that way in the manga from the beginning and the show just took it in a different direction. Or maybe it's just plot armor. I don't know. Um, but those 20 episodes, man, they were still... They were still a bit crazy to, to watch. They, they really wanted to hammer in everything to a point where it was like, yeah, we're going to make you see every little detail of these characters' lives for these 20 episodes. Anyway, I want to know what you guys think down below of the the episodes from like 1 to 30, how you think it progressed, you know, what you think of the, the entire story up until now when they introduced the freedom. Um how they went about doing it, how you think it was executed, and also the whole deal with Kira and the, the multimedia thing of it being basically like, you read the manga first, then you watch the show, and have the full explanation on how he survived. I want to know what you feel about that. I'll see you in the comments down below as usual. Let's get going on this conversation stuff, and I'll see you on the next video. So until then, bye!